I went to my hairdressers. I showed them a picture of Scarlett Johansson and said, I really love this haircut. And my hairdresser, he started to giggle, pointing to me and to the pic and goes, all right, first a quick quiz for you. Find 10 differences. What? Really? Sarcasm hurts. I wake up every morning to eliminate sarcasm from our lives. Why? Because sarcasm is an underestimated vicious poison which will ruin your relationships, affect teamwork, kill creativity, and erode your immune systems. What is sarcasm? Let me give you another example. I used to work as a financial consultant. We were preparing a huge merger of international companies. It was a big deal. Nine-digit numbers at stake and a lot of responsibility. I was managing the project together with my two women colleagues. We knew exactly what we were doing. And at the same time, we were quite young, blonde and feminine. So just imagine one day we were going to run a meeting finalizing the deal. We entered the room. Everybody was already there. Executives, stakeholders, big fish. The eyes of all people were focused on us. And money at stake triggered considerable surge of adrenaline. You could sense it in the air. And we were just about to start when one of the CEOs stood up with his hands in his pockets and with this expression of contempt on his face. He pointed to me and said, Hi there, girls. Where's your daddy? In a fraction of a second, I felt this small, like literally this small. I wish I could die there of a spectacular heart attack, but I just couldn't. Instead, I was just standing there, humiliated. Just imagine how much it cost us to rebuild our authority and successfully run the meeting. Sarcasm makes people feel small and irrelevant. It is a form of contempt. And the message behind it is you're not worthy. You're pathetic and ridiculous. Do you know what sarcasm actually means? It comes from a Greek word sarkazein, which means to tear one's body apart by dogs. There's pain and violence in the very word sarcasm. A Scottish philosopher, Thomas Carlyle, says that this is the language of the devil. So, I would like each of you now to think about one situation when you were hurt by a sarcastic joke. Maybe you were a kid, or a teenager, or an employee, or just a client who needed help from an expert who treated you like a dumb person. It happens a lot at hairdressers, at the doctors, at, at car repair centers, or on when we deal with construction workers. It happens everywhere. So just think of one situation. And now just a raise of hands. Who has ever been hurt by a sarcastic joke? Please raise your hand now. Right? And think, how did it feel? How was it? It is a shitty experience, right? I know. Because we have got to understand one thing. 
sarcasm is nothing but a vicious communication toxin, which in the long run will ruin your relationships. It is what causes divorces. A communication expert from the University of Washington, psychologist Dr. John Gottman, devoted 40 years studying communication of married couples, and he proved that there are four main communication toxins which ruin your relationships. And when I say relationships, I mean all kinds of relationships, including your business relationships and business teams. So among those four toxins, there are blaming, defensiveness, stonewalling or ignoring, if you like, and there's contempt, which includes sarcasm. Dr. Gottman calls those four toxins the four horsemen of the apocalypse because they affect our relationships so badly. Actually, Dr. Gottman applied mathematics into analyzing communication patterns and he can predict if a given couple will divorce with the accuracy of 95% based on how many communication toxins they use in their marriage. Just imagine that, 95% accuracy. And guess what? Sarcasm and other forms of contempt are the best predictors of a divorce. So let's just put an end to sarcasm. Where does it come from? Where does sarcasm actually come from? It is triggered by the reptilian brain, the part of the brain which is responsible for your survival. So sarcasm is based on the most primitive mode, attack in order to survive. It is a form of a passive aggression. But it doesn't seem like aggression at first look because the sarcasm is funny, right? Sarcasm is aggression in disguise. See, there are two communication layers in sarcasm. On the surface, there's a positive message, but underneath that, there's a negative intention. Let me give you an example. If I say, what a brilliant idea, really. I would never come up with it myself. It's a pure compliment, right? And now I will make this sentence more sarcastic. What a great idea, really. I would never come up with it myself. See, there's the same message but the nonverbal signs reveal the negative intention to both criticize the idea and ridicule the person. And this is what makes sarcasm so harmful, because it is a combination of hostility and humor. Whenever someone attacks you with a hostile remark, your reptilian brain should fight it. It should release cortisol, adrenaline, and prepare your whole body to fight for yourself. But then, there's this humor part in sarcasm, which makes you laugh at yourself. And your brain gets totally confused. It doesn't know what to do and doesn't protect you anymore. So what basically happens in the case of a sarcastic remark is you get Soccer punch, and you smile at your oppressor at the same time. But it hurts. It is a shitty experience. It hurts you deep inside, and you suppress those feelings, which later erode your immune system. It has been scientifically proven that sarcasm and other forms of contempt are predictors of how many infectious illnesses you are going to have in the next four years if you are a constant victim of those toxins. Let's put an end to sarcasm then. 
But if it's so harmful, then why do we even tolerate it, right? Why? I'll tell you why. Because sarcasm is a fantastic social game to play. It is fun, entertaining. It gives you power over people in an instant. Plus, it is a symbol of intelligence. Did you know that after it is triggered by the, by the reptilian brain, you have got to involve both hemispheres of your brain simultaneously to produce or understand sarcasm. So this is indeed, these are people who are intelligent that have the, the, the edge, that are brilliant at sarcasm. Don't we all want to prove to be intelligent? This is why we get involved in sarcastic conversations so often. You have probably noticed how contagious sarcasm is. Whenever there is a team meeting, all it takes is literally one sarcastic joke. And the whole snowball of sarcasm starts immediately. Let's put an end to sarcasm. Because it is a vicious poison, it is a costly one. The scientists analyzing electric activity of your brain tell us that your brain works much harder and it consumes much more energy to produce and understand sarcasm. So it not only ruins your relationship, not only harms your immune system, but it is just tiring and ineffective. And to me, being a mentor for leaders and teams, the worst thing about sarcasm is the fact that it triggers shame. This is what we are almost afraid of, to be ridiculed. And shame is the emotion that evokes the lowest possible electromagnetic vibrations in people. Dr. David Hawkins indicates that shame is more detrimental to people than fear and anger altogether. Because shame touches the very core of our identity. It touches who we are, and it makes us feel like we are nobody. It literally blocks our potential. And sarcasm plus shame, they affect teamwork. Because whenever there is sarcasm in the room, people are just afraid to be ridiculed. So they do not enter into open conversations, they not, do not share feedback, and they are afraid to come up with bold ideas, which ultimately just kills creativity, it just kills it. And in the long run, it affects the most, the very foundation of teamwork, which is trust. And believe me, I'm a team coach. I know a thing or two about teams. There is no creative and efficient teamwork without trust. So let's put an end to sarcasm already. And good news is there are antidotes. There are two simple ways to handle sarcasm. First, you can ignore it. It should work in a short run. Or you can address sarcasm with yet more sarcasm. It will also work, but I don't know if you want to start the vicious cycle, right? So over the past 10 years, I've identified a simple and super efficient strategy to end sarcasm once and for all. And it consists of three words. Educate, name it, and drive the conversation towards positive intentions and goals. First, you have to educate people. So educate your business partners, your friends, your family, your kids. It takes two minutes to talk about sarcasm. And people, when told about it, they are usually shocked 
what are the consequences of sarcasm, and they notice how much sarcasm there is around them, and how much they use it themselves. Then you have to name it whenever it appears in excess. So you just say, I sense sarcasm here. That was sarcastic. Stop the sarcasm. Like that. It's easy. This is why when I work with teams, I ask them to come up with something, a key word or a phrase, which will signal whenever there is too much sarcasm in the room. Usually it's something funny, it's a word relevant to the team, like a squirrel or Oklahoma for some strange reason. And one of the teams came up with a funny solution to buy tea mugs with the word sarcasm printed on them. So whenever someone spotted too much sarcasm, they would offer a cup of tea to someone overusing this toxin. It was super fun and really worked. And the third element is drive the conversation towards the intentions and goals. So you just say, all right, I sense sarcasm, but let's get back to the subject to the, of the meeting. Let's move on, let's focus on the solution. It's natural and it should cut sarcastic conversations. And if you have a tendency to overuse sarcasm, whenever you notice that, ask yourself a very important question. What is your intention? What is the real message you want to convey? Because usually there's either power game going on or there's a negative feedback that you want to communicate. And if this is so, try a more constructive manner to get the message across. So let's just imagine our homes and offices without sarcasm. Let there be joy, fun, sense of humor, but no hostility. Let's put an end to sarcasm. Thank you.